Alright, so I'm going to try to make it to where in this video we will finish all the stuff we need to do to this thing before we can start wiring. So therefore, next video of this project, we can actually start wiring this thing. So, first thing is let's install the brake lines and get the brakes working. So I have bled a lot of brakes and this is really the only way that I have found for it to be successful is if you use gravity, put the master cylinder as high as you can put it, sometimes you can leave it in the frame and then just put your brake caliper as low to the ground as possible, open it up and sometimes you need to put, you know, use one of those little Harbor Freight vacuum pump things, you can, I don't, can you see in the corner right there? Yeah you can to help get the fluid to the caliper, but then you open it up and it just starts leaking out. But what you have to do is rotate the caliper like this and you can just kind of see extra air bubbles coming out and you just leave the valve open and you can see it's just leaking out. Kind of gets all over the caliper, but you're able to clean it later. See, extra air bubbles, extra air bubbles. Yeah, you just kind of keep rotating it, rotating it around, making sure that your master cylinder isn't running dry. And once it finally stops, you can close it off. And most of the time, it's that easy. It is bled and uh, it works. Now I have three, three calipers to do, so that makes it an extra bit of a challenge. Why are my gloves heating up? This oil is... Good thing I'm wearing gloves. This brake fluid getting on my fingers, I can feel my fingers getting really warm. Is that the brake fluid or is that just sweat? I don't know. But that is the pretty much the easiest way that I have found to bleed these things. Alright, I bled all the brakes. Didn't really film that much of it, but it's really messy and I don't want to get the camera covered in brake fluid. It's also kind of boring just watching you know, brakes being bled. This is why I really don't worry about where the bleeder valve is on brake calipers because I take them off and so therefore I can do that rotating trick because I've really, with all the brakes I've bled over the years, I've found that that is the most successful and easiest way to successfully bleed brakes. It's a bit messy, but it gets the job done. I'm, I'm surrounded by like three mosquitoes. It's driving me nuts. I'm getting eaten alive out here. I kind of hate the summer because of just mosquitoes and heat, humidity. It's kind of miserable to be honest. But I complain too much about the cold to complain about the heat, so I just complain about mosquitoes. Alright, I think that's tight enough. There we go. The rear is on. Alright, let's test if the front works. Nice. Seems like they're working. Alright, brakes are installed. I'm curious if they work. I'm just gonna push this thing forward and slam on the brakes and see what happens. Not bad. Not bad. At least it stops it. Not bad, but the true test is going to be obviously driving this thing because we're really not going to be able to really tell if they work just by pushing it. Yeah, hopefully these brakes are strong enough. I know they are motorcycle, 
calipers and go-kart master cylinders, but hopefully they're strong enough to stop this huge thing. This thing's gonna do nothing but just trap a big air bubble in here, so I gotta be smart with how I bleed this thing. Yeah, I'll admit it's becoming more and more of a challenge to get the camera in here to kind of show what I'm doing, but yeah, can you guys see this little thing? Brake line, attached to here, attached to the slave cylinder, so yeah, it's a bit cramped in here. So now, now that the brake line, uh, not brake line, now that the hydraulic line is hooked up to the slave cylinder and the master cylinder, now I have to take this stuff off to be able to bleed them properly. All right, so it kind of feels like the clutch is working. It is hard to push. I can definitely feel like that's definitely feeling like it's moving something. So I do think the clutch is working. And I'm definitely gonna have to play around with the height of this because the shorter this is, the more movement of the pedal and uh, to push this. And we're probably just gonna have to play around with that to make it to where it's uh, a good ratio of being able to slip the clutch easily and having, not having the clutch super sensitive. But like with most things on this project, we're only gonna be able to really test to see if it works once we test drive this vehicle. All right, so this is a crude list that I made of all the stuff we need to get done before we can start the wiring, and I'm gonna really try and finish this list in this video, so therefore next video of this project, we can actually start wiring. So we got the brakes done, we got the clutch done. Now somehow, it took me two days just to get those two things done. I'll be honest, I'm kind of dragging my heels with this thing right now. When I've been working on a project for so many weeks in a row, I kind of just really lose steam and have a hard time getting productive and getting stuff done. So I, 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 at the end of this video, I'm, I may put this thing to the side and work. I need to work on something else. I need to, I'm, I'm getting burned out from this project. I know we're really close to being able to get this thing running and working uh, by the end of this video, hopefully, but I may need to just put this thing to the side for a couple weeks and work on something else. But for now, we, I really want to try and get this list done in this video. So next thing is let's install the front limiting straps. All right, so this is the max that the suspension can go down, or the frame can go up, depending on how you look at it. So I'm gonna measure it. So 
17 inches right here, inches, and then I'm going to raise or lower the frame an inch and a half to make it to where when we put the limiting strap on there and it binds and grabs, it's not going to be the full, you know, length travel of the shock. Basically the same we did for the rear. Alright, so when I raise the frame up, it should stop before 17 inches. Hopefully it should stop at 16 and a half. Alright, front tires all the way off the ground. 16 and a half. Perfect. So it still has half an inch of movement uh, before the shock bottoms out. So. So I'm looking at the suspension on this vehicle versus the suspension on the CBR 1000 project on the front uh, compared to the suspension job on the front of this vehicle. And then I'm more eyeballing it because to be able to get true numbers of the exact amount of suspension travel that this vehicle has, I have to take the tire off, have to take the shock off, which I kind of don't really want to do that right now. So I'm kind of just eyeballing it and estimating, but it looks like this vehicle has about half of the total suspension travel that the CBR 1000 has, and it's, it's because I wanted to use, you know, we wanted four wheel drive, I really wanted four wheel drive, and I chose to use Ford Ranger CV axles because they're cheaper, and in my opinion, stronger than anything Polaris, And but the downside is these Ford Ranger CV axles just don't have the articulation, they don't have the flex, that Polaris CV axles have, so that's really limiting us with the total, with the amount of suspension travel that we could have with this setup. So it's a bit unfortunate, but it's what I chose to do because these are, in my opinion, uh, these are cheaper, but in my opinion, they are stronger than anything Polaris because they're automotive. I mean, you can find these Ford Ranger CV axles brand new on eBay for 50 bucks for, versus. Try to do that with anything Polaris. You're spending hundreds of dollars for either used or even more for brand new. So that's why I chose to use Ford Ranger uh, CV axles. But unfortunately, it's just really limiting us with the suspension travel that we could have on this vehicle. All that work for basically just making two of these little things, gonna weld these to the frame, so therefore we finally have a place to mount these reservoirs to the frame, so therefore they're not dangling all over the place.
Alright, we got the reservoir mounts as well as the coolant lines. I did finish the coolant lines. I put the uh, the hose clamps on the parts that I missed in the last video. The only thing we're missing with the coolant is the overflow tank. I did buy one. Should get here soon, and when it does, we'll install it. But that's done. Reservoir mounts are done. So Next, I think let, let's install the winch. All right, next thing is let's install the winch that I bought for this vehicle. This is another uh, Badland 5,000 pound winch from Harbor Freight. Same winch that we have both on the CBR 1000 project and on the mini rock crawler project and they seem to work great and they're relatively cheap. Now, yes, I do know that I am calling this project the mini trophy truck project and I know that most trophy trucks don't have a winch but I'm mainly just calling this thing the Mini Trophy Truck Project is because I want it to look like a trophy truck. I'm hoping it's going to look like a trophy truck at the end once I'm finished with it. But because we have four-wheel drive and, uh, and low range, it's more kind of like a Mini Ultra 4. Basically, it's a Mini Ultra 4 that looks kind of like a trophy truck. That's basically what I'm trying to build. And I do plan on taking this thing to Windrock and other places and hitting some gnarly, hopefully gnarly trails to kind of see what this thing can do. So that's why I do want to add a winch to this thing. So worst case, if I do get this thing stuck, I can, uh, I can winch it out. Alright, winch is done. We are slowly knocking this stuff off the list. Now, I've always been curious how much flex the suspension has, so I'm going to pick up the right front tire only and see how high I can get it in the air before it starts picking up any of the other tires. So, yeah, hopefully this thing has decent flex to it. I have been kind of debating a little bit if I should put a front sway bar on this thing, but I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think it needs it, so... That one's still on the ground. This one's still on the ground. It's kind of starting to pick up that tire, but it's still, I don't know, it's still on the ground. I'm trying not to move it too much because I don't want to influence the suspension. I mean, it's still on the ground. And this is still on the gun, so it can get going. Hopefully I don't cave my roof in doing this. Okay, I, I think I have to call it. That is no longer, I mean, it's kind of touching. Yeah, that's, I'd say that's it. So oh, it is. Yeah, 22 inches off the ground, so not even, not even two feet. So, it's not terrible. So, 22 inches, I, I don't really have anything to compare that to, aside from the mini rock crawler project, and that thing was, that, that thing's a lot smaller, a lot smaller wheelbase. And I know for a fact that uh, one of the front tires can get up a three-foot table, while the other tires are totally planted. So 
It's not as much as the Mini Rock Crawler Project, but that one has four link suspension, so that's not really a good comparison. So, I don't know. 22 inches. Is that good? Is that enough? I don't know. But, yeah, this doesn't really answer any questions uh, as far as should I add a front sway bar to this thing. I guess that's going to have to be answered uh, when we take this thing for its first test drive of how much flex this thing still has. But it does look cool. Now, we need to put a chain tensioner on the chain that goes from the engine to the secondary transmission. Now, I found this. I forget what I made this for, but we're not using it for that project anymore, so let's use it for this one. Now, all we gotta do is basically just make an arm that this attaches to, that also attaches to this piece of tubing right here, and then we can simply just put tension on the top part of this chain. Alright, it's a little hard to see in there, but the chain tensioner is done and installed. It's a little it's a little too tight. Maybe I should loosen it a bit. This, this chain is gonna stretch a little bit, so I don't know. Should I just leave it and then let it stretch a little bit? Chain tensioner is done. Now I think I'm just gonna do the throttle and then call it for this video. Because I'm trying to do everything we need we, we really need to do before we can start working on wiring. And vacuum lines, that, that can wait. Front panels, that can also wait. As far as vacuum lines, I was gonna try and make the metal versions of these things in this video and mount them in the dash, but we have these and we can just use those in the meantime, so that stuff can wait till after we get the engine running and after we do our first initial test of this thing. So for now, let's just do the throttle and call it for this video.
so we got the throttle pedal hooked up. That should be working. We got the brakes working. The clutch should hopefully be working as well as we finally got this vehicle to the point where next video of this project we can finally start working on wiring and trying to get this engine running and everything. We got most of the stuff done on the list. We, there's a couple things we didn't do, but that stuff's really not that important. I did want to add just some panels in the front, but we, can, we don't really need to do that right now. We can do that after we get the engine running, as well as I kind of wanted to hook up the, uh, the vacuum lines and make the metal versions of the syringes and get that hooked up to the dashboard, but we can, again, we can do that later. That's not something that we have to do before we get the engine running. I, I really wanted to do all the stuff that we had to do before we can do like, like the clutch, the brakes, the gear shifters, all this stuff. So therefore, when we do finally get this engine running, we can actually take this thing on its first test drive and everything. I'm probably going to want to test this in my backyard first. Mainly just test the clutch, the gears, make sure the four wheel drive is working. Test the coolant system, making sure it's flowing, make sure the engine's working properly. Just test all that stuff in my backyard before we take this thing uh, on its first true off-road test. Now, I am going to take a break from this project because I've been working... This is, this is video, what, 23? 24? Somewhere around there. I think, I think this is video 23. <laughs> this has kind of been... A lot of videos. Yeah, when it comes to a project like this, I can only really work on this thing for so long, for so many weeks in a row, before I kind of start getting a little burned out, just a little tired of working on this thing, kind of just end up staring at this thing for long periods of time and not really getting productive. So, yeah, I kind of need a break from this project. And uh, there's a bunch of other projects I'm in the middle of that I kind of need to continue. So we're going to start working on some other stuff. and I'll, you know, But we'll come back to this in a couple weeks. When we do, we can finally start working on wiring and all that stuff. But uh, anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video.